right. All right. <clears throat> Good. Thanks for everybody uh, to be here for this 2015 um, National Signing Day. Uh, you know, recruiting is a group effort, definitely a group effort. Uh, there's a lot of people that I have to thank, so bear with me here for a little bit. Um, but really, first with the assistant coaches. I mean, they, all the, the hard work and relentless effort that they go through, months and months of relentless effort to go through to, to get, you know, really the guys that we want. I like to thank the coaches' wives for taking their time out to come have dinner with us and, and sit with the wives also, too. Our support staff and administration for all that they do, especially Dr. Drummer, who takes time out of her Saturdays to come meet with every single one of our, our student athletes. Greg Ross, who does all of our write-ups, you know, academically on our guys. Stephanie Boyle, all of our recruiting assistants uh, for their time and effort for coming out and helping us. The Kent Hotel and Conference Center for all their hospitality of, of having our recruits and their family stay. Uh, all the restaurants, uh, Quaker State, BW3s, uh, Brico right here in Kent that all for their hospitality and, and they do an unbelievable job of providing for our student athletes and their families. Um, and Bill White at the Bowling Alley, uh, that, that really kind of sets us apart in the recruiting of, of doing what we do Friday night and it kind of sets the tone really for a relaxed weekend for all of our recruits and their families. So a lot of people that we sit there and have to thank, uh, hopefully I didn't f uh, forget anybody, but um, it is definitely a group effort, and you know we really kind of get the kids that, that really fit into our program and also that fit into Kent State University. A little bit about this class here. We feel that we feel that we, we feel the needs that we, that we had to fill really with a lot of depth. Um, we will continue to recruit, you know, OKG, our kind of guys, really academically motivated, tough leaders. Those are OKG, our kind of guys, which we will always sit there and get. We signed 23 guys. Three of them are already here on campus. They were mid-year guys for us. We signed 20 guys today. We kind of brought, uh, reached out a little bit this year with um, reaching really 11 states. You can say 11 states, really 10. We got a junior college kid out of California, but he's via Florida. Uh, so he's a Booker T. Washington kid. So really 10 states that we, that we reached out to this year. Um, three of them were state champions. Uh, eight of them were first team all state. Uh, 15 of them were captains on their, on their team, you know, also too. So again, those, those characteristics that we're looking for in guys, this class definitely, uh, you know, fits. And then academically, they, they were a 3.0 football team, 3.0 uh, uh, GPA average, and also a 20 on the ACT. So all the things that we look for, you know, in guys, this class, you know, really feels. So super excited about it. Um, again, our kind of guys, the guys that we definitely want, the guys that we definitely think that fit into our program and also this university. So with that, that's kind of the open statement. I'll get the coordinators up here to really kind of talk about the offensive guys, the defensive guys, and then I'll get back up for any questions. Coach George, we'll start on the defensive side. All right. Amazing. <laughs> As Coach was saying, I'm going to kind of continue in, into what we said, what we're talking about. Uh, in this signing class, there are 12 defensive players. Uh, Ten of those players signed today. We also had two early enrollees on defense. Um, the early enrollees, the guys that are already here, are Anthony Johnson, who is a Leo defensive end. Uh, edge rusher uh, who is from Booker T in Florida uh, via Pasadena City College. Uh, he was a qualifier out of high school, um, so he was able to transfer mid-year. Uh, the other kid is Carlos Pickett, who is a, a safety out of Georgia. Uh, he graduated from high school early and was able to enroll in school. So both of those guys are, are currently working out with the team uh, right now. Uh, the other 10 guys in the class, um, well, I guess I'll start with the entire group. Out of the entire group, we recruited uh, and signed five defensive linemen in this group. 
uh, two linebackers, and five defensive backs. Um, of those defensive linemen, there's really uh, one true defensive tackle. Uh, there's another uh, guy, Alex Hogue, who is a defensive end, defensive tackle. And then we also signed a, a couple of uh, Leos uh, who we feel like can, can play kind of our slash position between the a defensive end and a linebacker. Um, signed two linebackers, true linebackers, and then three three safeties and two corners that we feel like in this group. Well, you know, the, the Leo position that we recruit uh, is really a, a combination of a linebacker and a defensive end. A lot of times that guy is going to play on the line of scrimmage, uh, but also has the ability to drop into, in, into coverage at times. And also in some of our you know, our three down packages, that would be a guy that may play off the ball in a linebacker spot in certain situations. Uh, the guys who we would consider true linebackers would be our Mike and our Will positions. And those guys are going to line up, you know, a linebacker depth the majority of the time and, and, and have a coverage responsibility. Big hitters, these guys? No, I think we've tried to recruit athletes. Uh, I think both of the, the two linebackers that we've recruited are, are guys that can play in space and uh, you know you know as a linebacker anymore you have to be able to play the run but you also have to be able to play in space with as many spread offenses that we play against uh, you know those guys are going to have to be matched up on the <coughs> slot receiver at times uh, and be able to you know handle that guy underneath so you have to recruit guys that can that can play in space I think you have to start with athleticism in, in, in everything that you do in, in college football. Defense, offense, special teams, you have to recruit great athletes in, in, you know, in every position. So the first attribute that you're looking for, phys, you know, physical attribute, is athleticism. Being able to run, change direction, and bend your knees. Uh, those, are, those are top priorities when you start looking at players. Well, I think he's a, he's a great athlete, obviously. A uh, guy that can play in space, you know, you know, and again, defensively, you're always looking for guys that can hit and tackle and get off blocks. You know, we felt he he had all those attributes. You know, he's a good athlete, a good sized kid that can run and cover, but also can play down in the box at times, get off blocks and and make tackles. Yeah, I think we wanted to really, honestly, add depth at every position. Um, you know, the numbers that we took certainly are based on you know, what we need at each position. So, so for sure there was an emphasis to, to bring in some defensive backs in this class because of, you know, what we needed in terms of our numbers. I think that's hard to do. You know, I, I think they all uh, fit in. I think they're, you know, like Coach said, there are kind of guys which is, you know, the top priority. Obviously they have to be a good enough athlete uh, to play at this level. But then you, once you go beyond that, once you recognize that they are the kind of player that you need, then the, the next question becomes what kind of person are they, what kind of leadership traits, what kind of character do they have. And I think you know, as we go through, those are the, those are the top things that we're trying to find out about them as, as a person. Because you know, as everyone knows, all the guys that come in and play at this level we're great high school players and you know we need to find guys that you know once they get here are going to you know have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder and have the motivation and desire to improve over their four years here those are really the guys that that have the have success at this level first of all you know just to open with I just want to say it's certainly a privilege to represent Kent State University in a role of leadership within our football family Excited about the challenge ahead of us as we work forward, you know, working with the offense. Having said that, as it pertains to the recruiting day, you know, Coach talked about it. Uh, Coach George also talked about it. At the end of the day, there's a certain set of numbers that you have to work with. So on offense, we had about 11 guys that we brought in as an offensive unit. And I think you may have the breakdown in front of you, but basically it rolls out as four offensive linemen, a tight end, a couple of wide receivers, a couple of running backs, a quarterback, and really an athlete who could play a number of positions on offense. And really one of the neat things I've learned in working 
under Coach Haynes is that he does a tremendous job of helping us identify, as Coach George talked about, athletes in the big picture. So when it comes to skill positions, you know, we're not necessarily just looking, I'll give you an example, at receiver of a guy who only plays receiver. Quite often, when you follow our guys as they go, at least in this particular class, you'll notice that they also may have played a decent amount of defensive back as well. And we really think that just tremendously, you know, raises the bar, if you will, for the position of what these young men bring to the table. Uh, one of the neat things as you look at our group collectively, you know, offensive line wise, uh, in recruiting, I think it's always kind of interesting when you pit the young men coming in on their visit with the current players we have. And at the offensive line position, I'm just here to tell you, if you guys were standing at a distance from where we are in this room, and you saw some of the offensive linemen we brought in that are now joining this class, you would have had a hard time with some of them discerning, are they already veterans on this offensive line? Are they new guys coming in? That's a great start, let me just tell you. Even though Coach Sharp loves his work down in the weight room, uh, he likes it when they come in already chiseled and have a little bit to them, especially at a position like that with offensive line. Uh, so we're tremendously, as Coach George said, excited across the board about all the guys that we brought in. So the question is on Malik uh, Mitchell, the quarterback that we have. And really, when you evaluate quarterbacks, from my perspective, typically what we try to do is bring to the table kind of a ranking group. You know, it's not so much here's number one, here's number 10, but if you can kind of put them in a group, if you would say, hey, here's our top three to five quarterbacks. Now, let's actively really pursue those guys. And most of the time, if you feel good about it, once we get Coach Haynes' blessing on it, then we can kind of pursue that. And oftentimes it's, well, first come, first serve. So Malik, from my perspective, because I've kind of been engaged with him as far as the recruiting process ever since I joined the staff, he's always been in that top group for us. So that's nothing new. And when you study him, which is what our job is, he is very athletic. So uh, the question might have been, are we looking to have one phase or the other? And we'd like to have a variety of things that we're able to do offensively. And we think Malik is athletic enough to do all those things for us and not limit him just to a pocket, you know, tight pass quarterback. Well, he does a lot of things well. You know, I mean, shoot, I, I'm sure Coach George and him, you know, wouldn't mind if Coach Haynes said, hey, you might have him part time and, and whatnot. But, uh, you know, I think a lot of our guys, I thought Coach George answered it very well. It, it's hard to pinpoint just one guy because they all bring a lot of special things to the table. Uh, you just happened to mention P.J., and yes, he's a dynamic player, uh, but so are a lot of the other guys on the list there. Kind of what those guys have said, we, that's really what we try to, to really do is recruit, recruit athletes. And, and you guys know offense and defense, especially wide receivers, defensive backs can go either way. And, and you know, through the years, there's a lot of guys who come in at wide out that end up at D.B., a lot of DBs end up at wide out or running back. So as long as they, they are good athletes and they're tough, you know, and things like that, there's a multiple different things that you, can, that you can do with those guys. But, you know, when you look at PJ, you look at Antoine Dixon, you look at the two running backs that we sign, you talk about speed. That's what this game is today, is speed. And, and that's what we needed to upgrade, and that's what we did with those type guys. I think they fit a bigger picture. I mean, it's hard to say here in February, you know, how much we want to, you know, get our – nobody wants to get their quarterback hit, you know. So, um, but if, if a defense has given us something that a quarterback can run or a quarterback can scramble, then that's what we're going to do, you know. And that's what all of our quarterbacks in our system, you know, give us, and that's what Malik gives us also too. Well, I, think, I think a little bit of that is perception. You know, a perception that these kids can't be quarterbacks. And, you know, I totally disagree with it. Um, to me, you look at a lot of kids from, you know, I guess so-called um, better high schools, they're tapped out. You, you get a kid like that who has a lot of potential, who has a lot of upside to it. But I think a lot of that is perception out there that these inner city kids can't be quarterbacks. I totally disagree. You know, he's a great leader. He's a great student. He's a great person. Uh, what else do you look for? And, and if he fills those modes, who cares where he's from? Camp or anything? He came to our camp this summer. So we've had him ever since, you know, June in camp. And like, like Coach Treadwell said, he's always been high on our board. 
Well, I think, um, again, it's just, I mean, these are the guys we got. It's not all the guys we offered. You know, we, we get what we get. And I, and I think when you look at your staff, you, you try to try to go to the areas where, where the staff maybe has strengths at. You know, I, I had a, a huge strength in Georgia because I recruited Georgia a lot. So we went down to Georgia. We spent sent three coaches down to Georgia. Um, Coach Clark and uh, myself had ties in Florida. So we went to Florida, you know, a little bit heavier this year. So you kind of you kind of figure out where the, where the staff has recruited and has major ties at, and then you just go and, you know, put a hook out there and see if you can get the guys. And this was one of the years that we could definitely do it. Yeah, and, and, you know, Doc Gamble has been down there. He was there before, you know, he came on the staff here. So he's got a lot of ties down there. And I went down there for the first time. It, it's, a, it's a neat area. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot different from what I expected in, in high schools down there. A lot, of, a lot of Catholic high schools, a lot of um, very diverse high schools uh, with a lot of good football. You know, so it's an area that we will continue in, until they – so they shut us out, we'll continue to go down there and get guys from there because they're tough, hard-nosed kids. I mean, that's what they are. You know, um, you go to the, the so-called better high schools, and that might be a, looks like a so-called inner city school up here. And, and, but those kids are tough. Those kids are hard-nosed. So I, I like Louisiana kids. Uh, they didn't. You know, I got to thank my wife for that one. They're from Tallahassee. My wife's from Tallahassee. So, uh, and, and Gobby's right around the corner from where she lives. So we had a little inside track with the, with the Gobby kids. But, no, we, we recruited them separate. We recruited them different. Um, it just happened that we both got them both. And, I mean, to me, those are two. When I went down there, the high school coach, who's been around for a long time, felt that we got steals. He, he really thought that those guys were SEC players. And you watch them on film, they are. I mean, those guys are dynamite, you know, football players on a very good high school football team. I mean, they got beaten in the state finals, but they've been in the state the last three out of four years or something like that in Florida. So very high quality of football. I, I love it. And, and the hard part today is it's going the other way. Um, you know, back, back in the day, you just look for guys who played football, who played baseball. To me, the best defensive backs are baseball players because they can judge the football. They can judge the ball in the air. They, the best defensive backs that I've ever coached were baseball players, you know, not track guys. You know, so, um, but everybody specialized these days, you know. So it's getting harder and harder to find multi-sport, you know, kids. Uh, but I, I, I like them just because – for one, it shows that they're a competitor. I'd rather have a guy competing than sitting in a gym, you know, somewhere or, or a weight room somewhere. So, uh, but it's just getting, it's getting slimmer and slimmer these days because I think society is making them decide a lot earlier and specialize in just one or two sports. Yeah, a, l a little bit of, um, you know, you look at Florida kids, you look at Georgia kids, you look at kind of Southern kids, they, they commit a little bit later. Than, than what uh, you typically see up north. So it was kids that we've always had, you know, on our board. It was kids that we've always kind of, we kind of hung our hat on, you know, the, 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 the top two kids that we want, we were able to get our top two kids that we wanted. Uh, it just took some time and, you know, again, just a relentless ever, effort of Coach Gamble of just going down there every week and sticking with it because those guys had multiple offers, you know, from other schools. So. Um, Again, just a, a good job by him, just, you know, selling us. And, you know, Will came here over the summer on his own. And a lot of times you, you see when, when kids come from a long way on their own dime, it shows real interest, you know, in the school. Uh, so we, we, we felt good about him, but you never know because the distance, you can't, you can't control the distance. And there's a lot of schools in between Louisiana and, and Kent. Um, but... Again, they're all type of guys. They run hard. They're physical. They're, they're fast. They can break it and they can go. So, uh, two good gets for us. Really, really two good gets and and add depth to our running back position. A bit of size. And they're not tall guys. They're not tall guys, but they're you watch them on film. They're power runner guys. 
you know. So that's kind of what we're what we need and what we're looking for. You you know, um, this this day and age of recruiting, the red shirt and idea is kind of over. We we expect everybody to come in and and want to play and play, and they'll have an opportunity to come in and play. That's kind of the beauty of recruiting. That's kind of the beauty of once they get here over the summer and once we go through fall camp is we'll see how it unfolds. But you talk to any kid that you recruit, red shirting is not the issue. They want to come in and play. And we want them to want to come in and play. You know, I never, I never want to recruit a kid. I, I like kids who've been through adversity <laughs> because they're going to go through adversity in college. I like kids who want to get drafted. You know, because there's a drive, there's a want to there. So um, that's the beauty of recruiting to see who at the end of the day of these guys kind of fit into the mold, you know, and fit into a role that they, you know, we didn't expect. Through my years, the guys that you expect don't. The guys that you never expect do, you know. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll see, <laughs> you know. Any other questions? All right, again, I thank you guys for, uh, thank you guys for coming and super excited about this class and hopefully in three years, you'll tell me how we did with this class, all right? Go Flashes. <laughs>